Hi, I'm Maine and this is Time Lapse Laboratory. I've spent the last month of my life catching, growing, and hatching the world's deadliest insect, the mosquito. I'm going to show you why this has been getting a whole lot of use the last month. So this is a cooler that's been sitting on my back deck for a while now. And I didn't realize that it actually was filling up with water. As you can see, there's a lot of insect larvae in here. So I'm curious if I can actually film a time lapse of what a lot of this looks like in potentially a little less water. So I've got the cooler in the bathroom now. I'm gonna strain all of what was inside the cooler, which is all the insect larvae that's still here, through this cheesecloth and uh, collect it and put it into a smaller vessel so that I can film it. I decided to do this in my basement shower instead of in a sink because I thought lifting the cooler and dumping out at chest height into cheesecloth would be much more difficult than doing it on the ground. That was probably the dumbest way I could have done that. As with any new process, hindsight is 2020. You can see all the various larvae on the cheesecloth here. There is some dirt and debris here, but the vast majority of the dark material is insect larvae, and most of it is mosquito larvae, specifically tiger mosquito larvae, which is present throughout the eastern United States and in many other places as well. So I realized in doing this that I drained out all of the water I would need uh, to fill this little cup. So I've actually swapped it out with a much, much smaller cup, hoping that I have enough water to actually fill it. And these guys have something to swim around in. That is the hope. We will see. I really want to use the same water that was in the cooler here because that will give me the most consistent parameters that the larvae were already used to to film. Doesn't look promising. I want to avoid using chlorinated tap water because that could add something that would throw off the pH or introduce a chemical like chlorine that could kill off the organisms that I'm trying to film. Although I found out later that tap water doesn't cause significant mortality of mosquito larvae. I'm going to inside out it and hopefully in one swift fell swoop you're going to contact the bottom with the water. What I'm trying to do here is dip the cheesecloth that has the larvae on it into the cup in order to get them to fall off of the cheesecloth. You can even see to the right that there's larvae swimming in the few drops I spilled onto the table from the cooler. Kind of hammers home just how many larvae can be present in a small volume of water. When I pan back to the cup I'll be using for shooting, you can see various stages of the insect larvae. The large black stage is called the pupa stage. It's a non-feeding but still motile in the water. The smaller, longer S-swimming larvae go through four instars, essentially size and developmental stages of swimming and feeding before they turn into the pupa. The smallest stages you see here are the first stage and the largest are the fourth stage. So I didn't think there was quite enough light, so I added a second uh, video light. And it seems to have brought the exposure up so that you can see pretty clearly the top of the larvae. Very interested to see how this turns out. Between the egg hatching and the adult mosquito emerging takes roughly between 7 to 10 days, depending on the temperature of the water and a number of other parameters that affect mosquito development and life cycle, such as light and oxygen. I thought this shot was great in showing off the different larval development stages. I also realized in shooting this inside my house that I'm probably going to be dealing with mosquitoes inside my house for a little bit longer than I had uh, anticipated. It's pretty neat though. This is all the larvae in just five gallons of standing water outside. So if I'm going to have a bunch of bugs in my house, I want to do it right. I had the 40x lens on this camera, but I switched it to the 4x because I can actually get uh, some depth of focus and depth of, depth of field with that objective and with the 40 uh, I can't at all. So it's been about 18 hours If I can get this to focus here And there's still a lot of larvae moving inside of the cup and glass You can really clearly see the breathing siphon that the mosquito larvae used to breathe here. I'm going to have so many mosquitoes in my house. The Ulti camera has been running for about 50 hours, and the microscope camera has been running for about 80 hours. Looks like we got some real cool footage, and I have a bunch of mosquitoes in my house now. 
Great. I added the arrows here so that you can easily see what the pupa looks like before it emerges. The pupa is curled on in itself during development and straightens out before the emergence when ready. The exoskeleton splits the top of the head and the fully formed adult mosquito emerges. The development cycle of these mosquitoes begins when the adult female mosquito that has fed on blood finds a small pool of water, as little as 30 milliliters or about an ounce, and lays her eggs. Once the eggs hatch, the larvae enter the first instar, the smallest larval stage that you can see here. The instar are free swimming and will feed on organic material in the water and grow in the water through three additional instars, molting each time to grow larger before turning into the pupa. During the pupa and final stage in mosquito development, the pupa no longer feeds and swims through the water column until it eventually stays at the surface to emerge, like you see here. Mosquitoes are responsible for transmitting and spreading diseases to humans that include West Nile virus, chikungunya virus, dengue fever, and malaria, with the tiger mosquito, Aedes albopictus, that you can see here, also being identified as a carrier and transmitter of Zika virus. The CDC ranks the mosquito as the world's deadliest animal, ahead of snakes, dogs, and tsetse flies. A common misconception is that mosquitoes and other insects are not animals, but they actually do fall in the animal classification, with over 400,000 deaths each year due to mosquito-transmitted malaria alone, and 720,000 to a million deaths worldwide as a result of mosquito-borne illness. These are the most deadly animals in the world by a significant margin. The tiger mosquito was first introduced to North America in the port of Houston in 1985 through a shipment of used tires. Although the tiger mosquito was identified earlier in the United States, the 1985 introduction of this invasive species was where the first breeding population was identified. Since then, it has spread through a significant portion of the southern and eastern United States and continues to expand as the species becomes more cold hardy. Now I'm going to try to do this with a plate. This is going to give me all of the insect larvae in a much thinner plane and hopefully I'll be able to get everything more in focus for a larger portion of the shooting. Here's another really good shot where you can see the difference in size between the first and fourth instar. So I have changed the position of both the cameras, especially with the microscope lens, trying to get a much tighter shot of the plate at the bottom, and also moved the ulti camera to the side of the plate where a lot of the larvae are congregating. In 190 hours of shooting this plate, the only interesting shot I got was this one. A dead mosquito being carried to the shore of the plate and dismembered and taken away by ants. While it's not what I had intended to capture, I still find the footage fascinating when reviewing it. It ended up being one less mosquito that I had to get rid of in my house. It also gives you an opportunity to see the white and black stripes on mosquito's legs that give it its distinctive tiger mosquito name. As always, I learned a ton from shooting this project, and I'm going to make a better effort to eliminate standing water from my property whenever I can. This is a very zoomed in shot of one of the more clear final molts of the hatching of a pupa into an adult mosquito. You can see the pupa unfold and begin to emerge from the exoskeleton. Then the emerged adult stands on the top of the water using surface tension until the body and the wings of the mosquito harden and it can fly away. And here's that process sped up in reverse. If you liked this video, you can support me by subscribing to the Time Lapse Laboratory YouTube page and hitting the notification bell. It's the easiest way to get notified when I upload new videos for these kind of projects. You can also support me on Patreon. There you can see behind the scenes, Q&As, and other projects that I'm working on, and it helps me buy new equipment for filming these projects. You can also follow me on the Time Lapse Laboratory Instagram, at Time Lapse Laboratory, and on TikTok at the same handle as well. There I post other interesting time lapses that I'm doing. And as always, thank you for watching.